It's depressing to note how little the debt has declined after the first couple of years. Almost all the repayments are servicing the debt. It's only later, as the outstanding debt is reduced, that you finally start to feel that the debt is reducing significantly. The mathematics of finance is very powerful. Many economic problems, especially those involving time, can be handled when the basic principles are understood. For individuals, it helps to understand, among other things, what interest rates do for borrowers and lenders. It's also useful for business thinking through issues of investment where time is of the essence. In this section, we look at decisions to invest. Is it financially worthwhile getting a degree? It will be expensive. There are the costs of tuition, living expenses, and also the opportunity cost of lost earnings. So does it really make sense? Companies make similar decisions. Should they spend money on capital equipment? Will what they get back in sales or in cost savings justify the expenditure? An important consideration to look out for is that the further into the future that money is earned, the less it's worth. That's for a good reason. If the money came in sooner, it could be invested at some interest rate. So money earned in the future is discounted to allow for that. So now let's check our understanding of the basic principles of investment decision making. To see whether an investment in education, or indeed any other kind of investment, is worthwhile, we need to use a discounted cash flow, a DCF formula. First we'll develop the formula, then we'll see how it can be used. To explain how the formula works, we'll make one or two assumptions to simplify matters. First, we'll assume that the cash flow estimates are certain. Second, we'll assume that in the absence of any better estimate, interest rates will stay constant over the life of the investment project. Now to illustrate how we arrive at the formula, we'll assume a firm investing £18,000 and expecting to get a cash flow of £10,000 for each of the next two years. Interest rates are currently assumed to be 10%. Now, we need to make sure that we understand the idea that a sum of money earned and received in a year's time is less than that sum of money earned now. If we had the money now, we'd be able to invest it at some given interest rate, here we're assuming 10%, and make a return on it. The further into the future the money is earned, the less it's worth to us. Bearing that in mind, we can develop the formula using our example. What's the worth of £10,000 in a year's time? Well, we have to multiply that £10,000 by 1 over 1 plus R, where R is the rate of interest, in our case 10%, or a tenth. So we multiply 10,000 by 1 over 1.1, that is to say 10,000 times 0 0.909, which gives us £9,090. If the firm had £9,090 now, it could invest it at 10% and turn it into £10,000 in a year's time. The firm is indifferent between 10000 in a year's time or £9,090 now. What would we need to invest at a compound interest of 10% to make £10,000 in two years' time? Well, we'd need 10,000 times 1 over 1.1 times 1 over 1.1 or 10,000 over 1.1 squared which comes to 8,264 
if we had £8,264 now, we could invest it at 10% and turn it into £9,090 in a year's time. Then reinvest that for a further year and it would become £10,000 in two years' time. So if there were a cash flow at the end of year three, we would have to multiply that by 1 over 1 plus r to the power 3, and so on. So the sum of the discounted cash flows can be written as sigma a sub k times 1 over 1 plus r to the k, where a is the cash flow, and k is some number of years between 1 and n. And that sum of the discounted cash flows is what we call the gross present value. That's the term which shows us the present value of all of the cash flows from the investment. And for the investment to be worthwhile, that gross present value needs to be greater than the cost of the original investment that will cause C. In other words, the net present value has to be more than the gross present value minus the capital cost. So if we write NPV equals GPV, the gross present value minus C, then NPV needs to be greater than zero for the project to be worthwhile. So if we look at our little project here, it seems to be a good idea because we invested 18,000 and we got back 20,000. But once we've discounted the cash flows to recognize that the further into the future it goes, the less it's worth, we've got 9,090 plus 8264 equals 17354. The discounted cash flows are less than the capital cost of the project. So this project is in fact not worthwhile. So the principle is that we've established a formula for discounting cash flows and we can now use these principles to establish whether an investment in education or indeed in any other project is worthwhile.